So, uh, real quick, a TV update. I finished Legend of Korra. It's up and down. Overall, it was okay. If we talk about Magic Johnson, if he played in the NBA today... I mean, the thing with Magic, and this is why for him I think it's a little tougher to do this than, let's say, with Bird, is because Magic was not a shooter at all. And I get it. If he came up today, there'd be more of a priority on his shot. But at the same time, it's like... I kind of want to keep the original mold of Magic Johnson in mind when I talk about how he would play today. Uh, But even so, you just know that there would be more of an emphasis on teaching him to shoot, and he probably wouldn't be looking to pass as much. I mean, the guy was a pass-first point guard, and that's not the norm in today's NBA. You you want a point guard who is going to shoot a lot and be an awesome shooter, and he'll get like six assists a game or whatever. And that's so different than Magic's game. I I don't know how much to change him if we're operating under this hypothetical. I have no idea. But if we can talk about his shooting a bit. So for the first, like, nine years of Magic's career, he didn't shoot threes. Okay. He shot with one hand. Wasn't much of a shooter. But he was a good free throw shooter. So... Could we operate as if in today's NBA, Magic could at least be a catch-and-shoot guy? Maybe. I mean, in 1990, he shot 38% on three and a half threes a game. And he did get up to about 90% on his free throws before his career was cut short. So there is evidence to suggest that Magic could at least make standstill threes. Now, as far as pull-up threes and that kind of thing, I mean, probably not. But um, I feel like he could at least have somewhat of a pulse from outside, you know, to where you'd have to care about him at least somewhat. The other thing, though, is you wouldn't be able to leave him open anyway because he'll just go off the dribble, you know? Now, another thing with Magic's game was, you know, back in his day, ball handlers were taught to bring the ball up floor with their back to the basket and kind of survey the floor that way. That, that of course, wouldn't really happen today. It'd be more pick and rolls, more isos, and I feel like Magic could handle that. I mean, he in a way was kind of like a less athletic LeBron so he would have a size advantage and teams would have to put a bigger wing on Magic to defend him I mean if we try to think about like you know where would Magic end up I mean let's say he was in the draft this upcoming year and he got selected by we'll just say the Knicks okay and then the Knicks are facing random team They're, they're facing Miami right Uh, you know, you probably put Jimmy Butler on Magic, because I don't know how else you would really defend him. I mean, it would not make much sense to put a point guard on him, because then Magic could take him in the post. And that's another interesting thing, too, is what position would Magic play? I feel like a lot of that would also depend on just what team he ended up on, you know? Like, if he ended up on a team that already had a point guard, so we'll say... Let's say he got drafted by the Kings, right? Kings get first pick in the lottery, Magic's the consensus number one pick. And they select him. He'd probably just play small forward, which means like you'd have to tell maybe Harrison Barnes to go f himself. But whatever, that's fine. Or you could just move him to power forward. To be fair, but uh, that's probably how it would go. Like Fox would still effectively be the point guard, but Magic would have to do it as well. And I feel like that would be interesting. And and I do think it would cause some teams to have to be like, well, you know, Magic, he's probably got to run the show because he'd be the best playmaker in the NBA immediately. So then what do we do with our other guard, you know what I mean? I feel like it would create a bit of a conversation. Now, at the same time, you know, I mentioned the Knicks earlier. If Magic was on the Knicks, he's the primary ball handler. Everybody else just play off of that. No questions asked, you know? As far as how you would build around Magic, uh, I mean, you'd probably look to still find yourself a really, really good scorer who can play off of him and also create something for themselves. Because while Magic is amazing... He's not on the list of all-time scorers. I mean, you know, he got up to 20-something points a game a couple times, and if he really needed to in the playoffs, he would. But, you know, Magic, he was, he was a high-teens, low-20s scorer, you know? And so, I guess, like, who would be the perfect two-guard next to him? I mean, there's a number of guys. There's Bradley Beal who would be perfect. A guy like Clay Thompson would be perfect. Um, you know, if we're operating as if a team has just drafted Magic Johnson... You'd probably look to trade for, like, Buddy Heald, because that whole thing's been going on recently. What would be the ideal center to play next to Magic Johnson nowadays? 
I mean, I feel like it would be cool if you could find yourself like kind of what the Mavs have done, where Kleba is a stretch center and then Powell is a roller. Um, it's tough to get two of those guys in your team who are actually good. I mean, if we looked at, like, say if a team was just desperate to be good right after drafting Magic, because we can, we can just assume, hypothetical world, he's one rookie of the year, he's a star already, oh my god, you know, all this stuff. Of course, none of this makes sense because it then implies that Magic Johnson did not exist in the 80s, but whatever. We're, we're in too deep for logic to all the, be all the way there at this point. You'd say, okay, we're, we're desperate to get an okay center. We'll sign Tristan Thompson. Probably won't cost that much. He can set screens for Magic. He can catch some alley-oops. Stuff like that, right? I mean, I feel like in a way it, it could be similar to Jokic and the way he impacts the Nuggets offense. Like, they're routinely one of the best offenses in the league. And Jokic doesn't average a million points. He averages like 19 or 20 a game. I feel like Magic could have a similar thing. I think looking at the young teams in the league right now, or maybe just lottery teams, where if Magic was drafted for this upcoming season, which one would be most interesting? I think the, the one would be Phoenix. Apologies to Ricky Rubio, but... That way, Magic, he's already got a lob threat with Aiton. Booker's the big-time scorer. Bunch of wings who can make shots. I think when we're talking about Magic in today's NBA versus the elite defenses, right? With Magic, I think the, the goal would be to try to get him switched onto a smaller guy so he can post up on him. Because, I don't know, it's tough to picture. Like, how good would Magic be if it's like, all right, playing a great defense, we need a bucket. He's defended by, I don't know, let's say let's say Magic has been drafted in the Eastern Conference and they are now facing the 76ers who are, let's see, it's Ben Simmons, Matisse Theibel, Josh Richardson. Like, is Magic going to go one-on-one against these really good on-ball defenders and beat them consistently? Because, again, like, he, his game, so much of it was back to the basket stuff because that's just how ball handlers operated a lot of the time back then you know so I would like to imagine because Magic was such a good ball handler for his size and stuff like he could he could do it like he could have success with it but it also comes into question um his contested shot making because again it's that idea of well how good of a shooter would he be if I keep in mind his shooting when he played And it's the idea of, well, is he going to be able to hit a three-pointer in a guy's face? Is he going to be able to hit turnaround jumpers consistently? I mean, Magic, he can make a mid-range jumper. We'll give him that. Um, You know, I think a lot of it would just be the post. I mean, he was a good post-up player, and maybe he could be creative enough at that. And you would hope that his team would run enough off-ball stuff for him to get into post position. I mean, what was Magic listed at? He was 6'9", 215. So it's not as if a lot of guys would be able to stay in front of him or stop him from getting to the basket, but there's there's quite a few big, versatile, strong wings who would have a chance in today's NBA, right? Now, of course, other things to point out with this is uh, if you built the right team around Magic with shooting and all that, it'd be extremely difficult to defend them because, uh, well, it's pretty obvious Magic can make any pass on the floor. Thinking about, well, can Magic go up against a a great defense? A team I reference a lot was last year's Raptors, right? Part of the reason why they were so successful on Giannis, a guy who is a million times more athletic than Magic, is because they left guys open on the other side of the floor to crowd Giannis, and uh, he wasn't able to make the pass every single time. Magic would make the right pass every time, whether it leads, whether it's an actual assist for him or not. Like, he'll either get it to the open guy or he'll make the pass that then gets to the open guy, you know? And Mignonis is a good passer, but you have to be in a different level to do that against a great defense, and Magic would be able to. But then, once again, you have to ask, just would Magic be able to consistently get by big, switchy, versatile, modern-day defenders who are all like six seven and up on the really good teams not every team has this but when you get deep into the playoffs those are the teams you run into but to mention it again i think the post up stuff from magic would close the gap there a little bit like if he's not going to be all-time incredible oh my god he can beat Kawhi leonard off of two moves good 
then you could probably post up on them a few times. So there's that. Um, I guess I can talk about Magic's defense for four seconds. Uh, he did get steals, so there's that. But his overall defense was not that good. Um, I don't think he hurt the Lakers, but I don't think he made them better defensively either, besides grabbing rebounds, which, to be fair, that counts. I mean, stopping the other team from getting rebounds is nice. Um, you know, I feel like there'd be a way to, to hide him defensively. You know, like he's 6'9", he's a big guy. Just put him on the least threatening dude on the other team, and you should be okay. Now, to offset that, are you going to have to give Magic maybe a couple of really good defensive wings or whatever? Yeah, maybe, but... You'd have to do that anyway. So, yeah. I also feel like if Magic was switched on to good players, you know, really good ISO guys or whatever for a couple possessions, just because of his size, I feel like he could survive that. Like, he wouldn't get torched all the time, but you certainly wouldn't want him defending the other team's best player possession to possession. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, Magic Johnson. I think the things he was great at, he would still be great at. I just think the, the question would be, If he played today, like, we need a bucket. Can Magic get us a bucket versus this really good defensive team where every single guy can defend, like, three positions? Uh, you know, sometimes he would probably go yes, sometimes no, which is basically every player ever.